Picture in your mind a towering structure, harnessing the power of water and stirring a whirlpool of controversy. That's the Elisu Dam for you. A hydroelectric marvel, the Elisu Dam stands tall in southeastern Turkey, close to the Syrian border, along the historically significant Tigris River. This river, the cradle of one of the world's most ancient civilizations, Mesopotamia, has been transformed by the dam into a reservoir spanning over 100 kilometers. But the Elisu Dam is more than just a massive structure on a river. It's a two kilometer wide and 135 meters tall hydroelectric plant that holds the water equivalent of an entire nation Malta. Such a colossal feat of engineering puts it on par with Turkey's other mega dams like the impressive Ataturk Dam. Yet, the question that lingers is, why was such a gargantuan structure needed in the first place? The answer lies in the heart of Turkey's ambitious Southeastern Anatolia Project, or SAP. This $32 billion project, with roots dating back to before World War II, aimed to address the pressing issue of electrical energy, particularly in the country's southeastern region. Scouting the two main rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris, the Turkish government pinpointed several locations for hydroelectric plants. These locations eventually came together under the banner of the SAP, leading to the construction of 22 dams and 19 power plants. These facilities, with a combined capacity of 27 gigawatts, can power nearly 10 million households. Not just that, the project also turned the region's irrigation around, enabling a near threefold increase in local cotton production between 1991 and 2001. Among these, the Elisu Dam is one of the newer additions. Its foundation stone was laid in 2006, marking the beginning of a journey that would not only shape the landscape, but also the socio-economic fabric of the region. With such a significant footprint, the Elisu Dam was bound to cause ripples. But why did it stir up a storm of controversy? To understand why the Elisu Dam was built, we need to travel back in time before World War II. The genesis of the dam lies in Turkey's burgeoning need for electrical energy, particularly in its southeastern regions. The country's government, aware of this pressing need, began scouting the two main rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris, for potential sites to build hydroelectric power plants. This scouting led to the inception of the Southeastern Anatolia Project, or SAP, a local initiative worth $32 billion. The project, whose roots can be traced back to the previous century, aimed to revolutionize the region's energy landscape. Over time, several sites were selected along the rivers, and these locations were eventually united under the SAP banner. The project was ambitious, to say the least. As of today, it has resulted in the construction of 22 dams and 19 power plants, boasting a total capacity of 27 gigawatts. To put this into perspective, that's enough energy to power nearly 10 million households. But the benefits of the project didn't stop at energy production. The dams, by storing water, could release it as required, providing irrigation for the entire region. This greatly boosted the local agriculture, particularly cotton production. Between the years of 1991 and 2001, the region saw an almost threefold increase in cotton yield thanks to the SAP. The majority of these dams were constructed in the 80s and 90s, however, the Elisu Dam was a relatively late addition to the project. Its cornerstone was laid in 2006, marking the start of an ambitious plan to build one of the largest dams in the country. The Elisu Dam, with its foundation stone laid in 2006, was a late addition to this grand project, but its construction journey was far from smooth. The road to the Elisu Dam wasn't paved with ease. On the contrary, it was a road strewn with obstacles. A dam of such scale located in a region with historical and environmental significance was bound to face its fair share of challenges. And indeed, the construction process was punctuated by a series of delays and difficulties. The first major hurdle came in the form of a financial setback. The original plan was to fund the dam with the help of several European agencies. However, two years into the construction, the plug was unexpectedly pulled on this funding. The dam, 
which was a beacon of progress and economic development, suddenly found itself in a precarious financial position. But it begs the question, what led to this sudden withdrawal of support? After all, wasn't this dam a part of a larger initiative to boost the region's economy and provide much needed electricity to millions of households? Well, the reasons behind the funding cut were rooted not in the present, but in the past. The dam's location was not just a geographical point on a map, but a place steeped in history, a place that held the stories of civilizations long gone. Just 60 kilometers upstream of the dam lies the ancient town of Hasankaif, a place that has been inhabited for over 10,000 years. This town, rich with archaeological sites, ornate mosques, Islamic tombs, and cave churches, was in the direct line of fire, so to speak. As the dam's reservoir would fill up, significant portions of Hassan Kaif would be submerged, its history lost to the depths of the Tigris River. And Hassan Kaif was not the only casualty. Nearly 200 villages were in the affected area, meaning around 80,000 people would be forced to find new homes, new lives. So why did the European agencies cut off their funding? The answer lies in a town called Hassan Kaif. The dam's progress was stalled not by the lack of funds, but by the weight of history and the cost of progress. Just 60 kilometers upstream of the dam lies Hassan Kaif, an ancient town with a history dating back more than 10,000 years. A testament to the passage of time, this town is a living museum, with archaeological sites that whisper tales of civilization's past. But as the waters of the Elisu Dam's reservoir began to rise, the fate of Hassan Kaif hung in the balance. The dam's construction meant that significant portions of this historical gem would be submerged. Imagine a world where ornate mosques, Islamic tombs, and cave churches, all rich in history, are hidden beneath the water's surface. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? But the story doesn't end with Hassan Kif. The dam's reservoir stretched far and wide, and nearly 200 villages found themselves in its path. These weren't just clusters of buildings, they were homes to around 80,000 people. These people, many of whom had lived their entire lives in these villages, were faced with the daunting prospect of relocation. Uprooted from their homes, they were forced to start anew, leaving behind memories etched in the very landscapes that were to be submerged. And while the dam stood as a beacon of progress, a symbol of Turkey's ambitions in the energy sector, it was also a reminder of what was lost in its wake. The cultural heritage submerged, the homes abandoned, and the lives disrupted painted a different picture, one of sacrifice and loss. The construction of the Elisu Dam was not just about the building of a hydroelectric plant, it was a tale of progress and cost, of history and change, of homes lost and homes found. And at the heart of this tale was Haysan Kaif, a town submerged, a memory etched in stone and water. The Elisu Dam, while a marvel of engineering, has a controversial legacy. Let's take a closer look at its impacts and the controversy it sparked. The Elisu Dam, a symbol of progress for some, is a mark of displacement and loss for others. The controversy surrounding the Elisu Dam is as vast as the reservoir it created. The dam's construction sparked widespread protests, leading to international boycotts. Several countries, including Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, withdrew their funding due to concerns about the project's environmental and cultural impact. But the controversy didn't stop there. In 2009, the dam became the target of an armed attack. The Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, targeted the construction site, claiming responsibility for the incident. They argued that the dam was a strategic asset for the Turkish government, which was using it to exert control over the region. This attack further delayed the construction process, adding another layer of complexity to the project. Despite these hurdles, the dam was eventually completed and has been fully operational for three years now. It now stands as a symbol of Turkey's determination and resilience, a testament to the country's commitment to progress. But what has been the impact of this controversial project? The dam's operation has undeniably brought significant benefits to the local economy. It has dramatically increased the region's electrical capacity, powering millions of homes and businesses. The dam has also boosted local agriculture through irrigation, transforming previously barren lands into fertile fields. However, these benefits have come at a steep cost. 
The dam's reservoir has submerged several towns and villages, forcing tens of thousands of people to relocate. The loss of historical sites like Hassan Kaif has been immeasurable, a cultural heritage lost beneath the waters. In addition, environmentalists have raised concerns about the dam's impact on the region's biodiversity. The dam has altered the Tigris River's natural flow, potentially threatening the survival of several species. The Ilisu Dam stands today as a testament to human ingenuity, but also a reminder of the price of progress. It's a story of power, controversy, and resilience.